What's your recollection of John Facenda, Greg Cosell? Well, it's funny. I have a number of recollections, Rich. Number one is I was the last one to work with him before he unfortunately passed, which was in 1984. And I had to go to his house because he could no longer make the journey uh, from his home to NFL Films. And uh, I remember working with him that day, and it was evident that he was just not quite the same guy, but uh, he was John Facenda. Uh, but my probably my most vivid memories are when I first started. I started at NFL Films in 1979. And uh, probably got the opportunity to start working with John in, oh, 1980, I would say. And I was young. I was just really learning the documentary filmmaking business and did not have a whole lot of confidence in myself writing scripts. I'd written a ton of papers in college, but writing scripts to be read is far different than writing papers. And I remember writing my first number of scripts and and John would read them. And I I just remember Rich being so, so nervous going into the booth with John Facenda. Um, And obviously I did not grow up in Philadelphia, but John Facenda was essentially the Walter Cronkite of Philadelphia. For people who remember when one person sat at a desk and just read the news, that's the way local news was as well back in the day. So John Facenda was in Philadelphia, really the Walter Cronkite of Philadelphia. And I just remember going into that booth, because you go into a little booth, you know, you've done a ton of narrations in your career, and there's just the two of you sitting there, and you feel very enclosed, very claustrophobic, and people are looking at you, and he would read your script, and I was so nervous that he would just, you know, kind of look at me like, uh, oh, this really isn't very good. And all you waited to hear John Facenda say to you, because it was one of his favorite expressions, was, you've given me a good horse to ride. And if John Facenda said that to you, all was right in the world. I could just imagine the way you've given me a good horse to ride. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, I heard that a few times, you know. <laughs> well, that is great. Good horse to ride. Oh, my gosh. And then, of course, the number of horses that he rode, um, Figuratively, obviously, and the way you just said it, Greg Cosell, as written by Steve Sable. I mean, The Autumn Wind is a poem that Steve Sable oh, wrote. Yeah. I mean, what a combination. And the fact that Steve, due to the pandemic, his enshrinement was delayed to this to this summer. He was named last year. Right. They're going to go in together. I mean, how incredible is that? I know. Ed's already there, too. That's incredible. Yep. That's from No, it's, it's phenomenal. And it's, uh, it's funny because I miss Steve every day. I come into the building here at NFL Films because he was really my mentor. He was the one who encouraged me to do so many things that fortunately turned out well. But, you know, it's funny getting back to John for a minute. Sure. You, you almost had to really work hard to write a script for him because it, it would have been easy just to write anything. And you could say to yourself, John's going to make it sound great. <laughs> You know, which was true, really. But sometimes you just had to kind of say to yourself, no, 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 I can I can write better lines than what I just wrote, even though John could make anything sound like it came from the mountaintop. Uh, But, you know, he was he was just the thing, though, that and like Steve, it's funny that you were talking about them together. Of course. Just a genuine human being. That was the thing. It's just like with Steve. I mean, there's so much people who didn't know Steve will remember about him and the impact NFL Films has had in our lives. But Steve was such a genuine, caring human being. And John Facenda was the exact same kind of person. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here, Greg. Do you remember your your favorite line, the best horse that you gave him to ride? Oh, that- no. That was a, that was a long time ago. <laughs> it's like, I can't remember that. You know, because back then, um, you know, you start out doing high like films here at NFL Films, really, to, 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 to learn how to make a film. Right. Because, you know, we do a highlight film for every um, uh, you know, every team in the league. We still do it. And in, in the early days, uh, when you were young and starting out, you would do three every off season. I remember my first five, six years, I would do three highlight films every off season, And that was the point, to learn how to make a film when you had some kind of deadline. And um, so I don't remember, you know, specific lines. But, of course, I was starting to do other things as I learned the business as well. Um, but, no, I, I can't remember any specific lines. But that that's what you always waited for, the, the good horse to ride. Mm, I love that. And uh, I'm mandated to ask you, did, did your Uncle Howard ever cross paths with John Facenda? 
right. know, that I don't know. Um, you know, the only thing I remember, and, I, you know, I, I was very conscious because of who I was, yep. and, you know, my name, that I did not want my uncle to be involved any time, you know, when I came out of college and was looking for a job, because I did not want that to be the reason I got a job. Sure. But because my uncle and Ed Sable were close friends, I did find out later on that they did speak, and 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 I don't know what they spoke about. I, I'm, I'm hoping uh, that my uncle said good things. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you but mean I, like I, he I, told it like it was about you too, Greg? Uh, Is that what you're saying? I, I would imagine so. I would imagine so. But um, uh, but I remember, you know, speaking of my uncle, the highlight, one of my highlights was when he wrote his first book. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember he was talking about college sports. And uh, obviously that was the same is true today, but it was certainly going on back then where college sports had started to be about money and with the scholarships and the whole deal. And and I was in college at the time he wrote his his first book. So we're talking 74 to 78, Mm -hmm. somewhere around there. And I remember he wrote about me on a page or two because I went to Amherst College where they don't give athletic scholarships, but I did play sports. And I guess he was using me as an example of what it was supposed to be, Ah. the way he saw it. Okay. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.